The world is not perfect, especially now. Chips have been getting more and more expensive, and we all know why. Defective one. Defective one. One. And this one will become a Core i9. Awesome. What processor do you have now? Is it a Core i3, i5, i7? Or are you one of those who are rocking the new Ryzen 5 or 7? It doesn't matter. All of you probably have a top end chip right now. Did it happen by accident or intentionally? I'm going to tell you all about it. This is MK. My name is Mikhail Krushin. Let's get down to it. So, we want to make a processor. What do we need for this? Silicon. Very pure silicon. Such silicon is grown in special conditions. It's these beautiful shiny cylindrical silicon crystals with pyramids on both ends. Later, these cylinders are cut into thin sheets, which are aptly called silicon wafers. The standard diameter of such a wafer is 300 mm. But so far, this shiny wafer is not ready to perform computation. First, we need to etch tracks, layers of insulation and metallization on it by means of clever masks and lasers. In short, turn the pattern of the key into a real key, or rather, into a large number of keys, Dozens and even hundreds of future processor dies can be etched on one wafer. Due to different refraction of light in their layers, such wafers look very beautiful. They are often shown at presentations and, if desired, they can be found on AliExpress for some $30. Of course, the Chinese will send you a defective wafer because the cost of a usable one can easily reach up to a couple hundred thousand dollars. And it would seem that it's all that has to be done. All you need is to cut out all the processors from the wafer, solder them onto substrates, encapsulate them and sell. But it happens that way only in the fantasies of our officials. At least 5% or even 15% of the wafer is immediately scraped. The thing is that processor dies, as you have noticed, are usually square or rectangular. But the wafer is round. And yes, growing a square silicon wafer is impossible. This is just how it is. But you can get full-fledged processor dies from the rest of the wafer and put them on sale as Ryzen 9 or Core i9. Right? Not really. The thing is that the process of laser etching of metallization layers in silicon is far from perfect and requires ideal conditions at the factory, for which several protection domes are created. In addition, the wafer has to consist of perfectly pure silicon devoid of any inhomogeneities. In practice, this doesn't happen. The smallest dust particles on the mask or the surface of the wafer can cause the freshly produced processor chip to be inoperable. Just think about it. Structures with dimensions of only a dozen nanometers are etched in the silicon. You can't even see them through a light microscope, let alone through your eyes. Therefore, even if the wafer seems perfectly clean to you, in fact, there may be thousands of nanoscale dust particles on it that will not allow you to create a perfect chip. So what do you do with those chips that are not so perfect? Of course, you can just scrap them, melt them down and grow new silicon crystals out of them. But it's the process of etching that costs money, and a lot of it. So chip makers found a more interesting way of dealing with them. They started to bin them. That is, to sort the defective dyes and turn them into second or even third rate products. Let's take a look at what a Zen 2 or Zen 3 processor die looks like inside. We see 8 cores, various controllers and an L3 cache. Taking into account the fact that modern desktop Ryzen CPUs have 2 processor dies under the lid, we can get a maximum of 16 cores, which is the case with, for example, Ryzen 9 3950X. But it very often happens that individual cores or even entire dies turn out to be defective. So a chip that was supposed to be 8 core, by disabling 4 inoperable cores can be turned into a 4 core one. 
and this is how Ryzen 3 3100 or 3300X are born. It is quite obvious that not only AMD is engaged in binning. Intel has an even wider variety of choice here because most of their dice come with integrated graphics. And if it is not operable, then it can be turned off and the resulting CPU can be sold a little cheaper. That's how the F lineup was born. And even Apple with its own M1 chip does the same. This SoC has 8 graphics cores, but apparently they are often defective, so the cheaper versions of iMac and MacBook with such a chip come only with a 7-core GPU. As a result, we come to a curious conclusion. All modern Ryzen CPUs are based on the same 8-core die. It's just that some of its cores are disabled in some processors so there is no need to build a separate production line for each CPU model. In the case of Intel, everything is a little more confusing, but the idea is the same. They only produce one or two types of dies from which all the processor models are made. For example, the 6-core Core i5-9400 can be made from an 8-core die with the index P0, which is also used in a Core i9-9900K. Or it may be made from a 6-core U0 die, which we find, for example, in the Core i7-8700K. However, the most curious of you are probably already wondering, how does it happen that there is a difference between, for example, the 8-core Ryzen 7 3700X and the also 8-core 3800X? Their main difference is the frequency, and besides, even being overclocked, the 3700 often falls a little short of its elder brother. That is, we clearly see that there is some difference at the physical level here. And that's correct. The thing is that modern processors are so subtle that their frequency potential is affected by the purity of silicon. Even the tiniest amounts of impurities in the silicon can affect the final product, and those could be hundreds of a percent. 24 karat gold is not even close to the purity of the silicon used here. As a result, the closer the processor die is to the center of the wafer, the purer the silicon is in it. This affects the so-called leakage currents. The higher they are, the more the processor heats up, but also the higher frequencies it can reach. The difference in the clock speeds can reach several hundreds megahertz. So the desire to separate such dies is quite natural. Thus, the Ryzen 7 3800X or Core i9-11900K are initially made from dies with high leakage currents, which allows them to reach high frequencies, but also unpleasantly surprise their users with heat generation. On the contrary, Ryzen 7 3700X or Core i7-11700K are made from dies with low leakage currents, so setting overclocking records is not for them, but their power consumption will also be lower. Now everything seems to be clear. We now understand how processors with different number of cores and with different clock speeds are produced on the same production line. But wait, where do so many defective dies come from? After all, it is obvious that Ryzen 3 is more popular than Ryzen 7. Do they really produce so many defective dies? No, it is reported that at TSMC, the yield level of operable dies for 7nm AMD processors with Zen 2 architecture exceeded 83%. Then where do the defective dies for Ryzen 5, Ryzen 3, and even for Athlon come from? They make them from working chips. You got it right. AMD, Intel, and other chip makers are limiting the fully perfectly functional Core i9 and Ryzen 9 chips in order to make a Core i3 and Ryzen 3 out of them. Why? Just because it's profitable. Let's say one 8-core die costs AMD $50 to make and the company charges 500 for the top-end Ryzen 9. But not everyone will buy such a CPU. It is obvious that the $200 Ryzen 5 sells much better. As a result, we get that if for each Ryzen 9 the company will get $450 of profit, then for Ryzen 5 only $150, which is three times less. However, if Ryzen 5 is at least three times more popular than Ryzen 9, it makes perfect sense to cut the chip's performance and sell it for cheaper. No matter how strange it may sound, this approach is more profitable for the company. Therefore, sometimes incidents happen, like for example when an 8-core Ryzen 3 1200 falls into the hands of users. 
Yes, this CPU is supposed to have just 4 cores, but since it is insanely popular, for the sake of profit AMD has used full-fledged 8-core chips for its production, accidentally leaving the other 4 cores unlocked. And this is not the first time that such a thing happens. More than 10 years ago, AMD sold 2-core Athlons and 3- and 2-core Phenom. Users quickly realized that a good deal of Athlons was obtained by software limiting, and began to unlock the rest of the cores in them and even the cache through the BIOS. But unfortunately, I'll have to disappoint you. In modern realities, it is no longer possible. Manufacturers began to use special jumpers between the core blocks, cache and integrated graphics and silicon chips, which are burned out when locking. Therefore, it is no longer possible to programmatically restore disabled cores, and the case of the 8-core Ryzen 3 1200 is an extremely rare exception. There is no magic involved in the production of dozens of processor models on the same line. Manufacturers have been engaged in binning for a long time in order to reduce the cost of production and earn money. But know that your Core i3 dreamed of becoming a Core i9. It's just that it wasn't lucky enough. This was MK, my name is Mikhail Krushen, and this is Artyom. In the description, you'll find the link for the silicon wafer. Know that in order not to get that's kind of silicon sand, make sure to specify for our Chinese comrades that they should pack it well. Because they didn't pack mine well enough, but I managed to get my money back. The money's back. The link is in the description. My name is Mikhail Krushen. I'll see you again. Все, иди спать. Потом завтра получишь. Перешагивай провод. Ну пролезь.